What is going on friends? Today I'm going to be sharing with you three of the absolute best ways to cut out any image in Photoshop. Let's get into it. What's going on guys? My name is Brendan from Outbound Media and you can find me on Instagram at Burnwells. Before I get started on this tutorial, I just wanted to let anyone who's new here know that I make new Photoshop tutorials every single Wednesday, so if that's something you'd be into, make sure to hit that subscribe button. So today I'm going to be sharing with you the top three absolute best ways to cut anything out of your image here in Photoshop. So to start things off, let's start with number three on our list, which is our quick selection tool. Our quick selection tool is essentially a brush that paints on a selection onto our image. So this technique for cutting out a selection is optimal for when there's a very clear and defined line of where you're wanting to select out. So in this case, it is our horizon of these sand dunes. So if we look up here at our controls, we have a few different options. We have a circle with a plus and a minus, and essentially the plus will add on a selection and the minus will take away a selection and you can tell which is which by the little icon in the middle. See here there's a minus and then when I click here there's now a plus. There is a shortcut for that and I will show you in just a moment. Whenever I use the quick selection tool I'll have my hardness at 100% and then the size does not necessarily matter. The smaller the brush the more accurate it'll be though. So you just click on the layer that you want to make the selection on. Make sure your quick selection tool is selected of course and all you have to do is just hold and drag, click and drag across the area. So now you can see I got these marching ants all around. So this is now my selection. If I zoom in, I can see that it missed a little bit of the areas that I want to keep. So the shortcut that I was discussing just a moment ago is if I hold the alt button, as you can see, it changes from a plus to a minus. Now I can just click with, while holding alt, I can click, I can just click and adjust some of the selection to better suit what I'm needing. So now everything looks good. You can double check just by zooming in and scanning across the area. Everything looks great. Now I can zoom back out and now I can just click my layer mask icon, press command I, and now I have my selection ready to go. So now for in this case I could add in a different sky, I could add some the Milky Way or something like that. But essentially, we now have the base for whatever we wanted to create. So our quick selection tool is our number three way to cut out a selection in Photoshop. Moving on to number two is our channels. So our channels are going to be a great option when we have a lot of little pieces that we want to keep. So in this case, we have all the little cables coming down from the bridge that we don't want to get rid of. But of course, with a quick selection tool, it's not going to be able to select all of that cleanly and perfectly. So that is why we're moving on to our number two best way to cut out an image in Photoshop, which is our channels. So our channels are not any particular tool on our toolbar, but they are a tab in our layers window. So if I go to my channels, you'll see I have pretty much my red channel, green channel, and blue channel, and then my RGB, which is all the channels mixed together and creating the entire image that you see. So if I just look at them individually just by clicking on them, you'll see that it just turns it into black and white. But essentially what you're looking at is just what is being affected on that channel. So when you're when you're wanting to cut something out in channels, you want to make you want to find the channel that has the most contrast between what you want to keep and what you want to get rid of. So to do that, first of all, you got to find the you got to find the channel that has the most contrast. So in this case, going through these, since I want to keep the bridge in the foreground here, the green channel looks like my best bet. So Bef I can't make any adjustments to my green channel, otherwise it will affect my entire image. So I'm going to duplicate my green channel by clicking, holding, and dragging down to this layer icon. Now I have a green copy. With my green copy selected, I can press Command L, and my levels will come up. I can drag the slider up until the bridge is looking about black, and then I'll drag the opposite slider up until the sky is pretty much completely white. You can just sort of play around with this and see what works for you. But of course you don't want to go too crazy because you will lose some detail. So what we're doing with our levels is we're pretty much making it easy for Photoshop to recognize the difference between what we want to keep and what we don't want to keep between black and white. So when we make our selection in a moment, it'll easily be able to register what you're wanting to keep and what you're wanting to get rid of. So as you might notice, there's a bit of gray and things like that, but we can fix that up in just a moment. So now, once you've finished with your levels, we can hold command and press on our green copy picture. 
now you see we have all these marching ants everywhere. Now we can go back to our layers and we can make a layer mask. And of course this is the opposite of what we want so now we can press command I and now we have our bridge. Let's just say I want to make a stormy sky in the background so I'm just gonna so I'm just gonna grab this layer this image which I just picked at random and I'm just gonna throw this in scale it up and then place it behind my image just just for an example here now I'll drag it behind of course and now as you can see there's a little bit left over and some weird fringing and stuff on our bridge but don't worry I'm gonna be showing you guys how to fix that so first thing that we want to take care of is all of the parts that our selection missed so if we hold the alt button and click on our layer mask now we can see our layer mask pretty much broken down into black and white. Everything that is white, that is 100% white, is 100% visible, while everything that is black is 100% invisible. Now anything that is gray is sort of somewhere in the middle. So since we want to keep our foreground here, we can just get a brush tool, make sure we're painting with white, and a relatively hard brush, so I usually like to keep my hardness at about 50%, and I'm just gonna paint white all along the areas that I want to keep. So just like this. Now it's okay if you go a little bit over the edges. I will be showing you how to get rid of that. And yeah, so just go through again and clean up any of the areas that you are wanting to see. Now we can do the opposite since we don't want to be seeing any of this white in the sky, we want our sky to be completely black, aka completely invisible. We'll paint on with our black, we'll still be using our brush tool, but now we're going to be painting with black. So again, same hardness, pretty much the exact same brush settings, and now we can just paint black onto our sky. Now of course you don't want to affect part of the selections that you want to keep, so just try to get as close as you can, and then we're going to be using a really awesome tool to clean up the rest of our layer mask so it's absolutely perfect. Now when you're done sort of painting on the white and black to your layer mask, you can hold alt and click on your layer mask again, and now you're pretty much back to where you were. So to get rid of any of the little bits of fringing and see how I spilled over the our horizon just a little bit, I can right click on my layer mask and go down to select a mask. So this is an absolutely awesome tool that you will find a bajillion uses for and here's one of them. So if I go and grab my refine edge brush tool and for the most part I usually just don't touch any of these make sure that the plus is selected and I'm just going to scale down and just paint over the areas that I don't want the color anymore. So in this case the areas that I spilt over on the horizon. Perfect. And now I'm going to do the same thing over here. Great. So now you can see it just got rid of that, all the discoloration for me. Now same thing over here, there's a little bit left over around this cliff, so I can go and just paint over that as well, and it will get rid of it for me. Now of course on top of the bridge there's a little bit. Now that I've cleaned up my edge completely, now I just want to get rid of this fringing, which is the color, the orange color on the outside of our selection, and so I'm just going to click this decontaminate colors box, and It'll do its magic, and as you can see, it just got rid of all the fringing for us in just one click. I usually output it to new layer with layer mask, so when I click OK, it will create a new layer, and then our old layer is just sitting underneath it. So if I ever want to go back, I can do so. So just remember, channels is an absolutely awesome way to cut out an image when there's some tricky bits that you need to get that the quick selection tool might not be able to get for you. So in this case, our cables, our quick selection tool will not be able to register all of them, So, but our channels can. So again, that is our channels coming in at number two. Now, coming in at number one, we are going to be discussing our pen tool. So our pen tool is pretty much the absolute best way to cut out an image in Photoshop. Now, you might be asking why when you realize how much work it can potentially be sometimes, but here's the reason why. With the pen tool, you have absolute control over everything that you cut out. You know what parts of the image you want and don't want, and there's no guessing that has to be done by the program because you're literally telling Photoshop, this is what I want, I don't want anything else. So our pen tool, of course, we got to click our pen tool icon, and I always make sure that I have path selected, and 
auto add slash delete is checked. Now, so how the pen tool works is when I zoom in, I when I click, I get a point. When I click again, I'll get another point with a line. Now, if I click again and then sync them up, so like that, now I have a complete selection. Now, if I right click in that selection, I can go make selection, make sure this is zero. And now I have a selection that is defined by where I just clicked. So I'm just going to deselect that. The pen tool can do a lot of cool and awesome things. So for example, it can create absolutely perfect curves. So the staircase is an absolutely awesome way to show you. So since I can, I'm going to start my selection up here and I'm just going to go down a little bit, click to here, and I'm just going to hold and drag just like this. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit left over, so I can hold my Alt key, and so I get this little arrow, click on my inside arm, and now I can just adjust this side by itself. So sometimes you won't be able to get the full selection, so you can just click on the line somewhere between, hold Command, and just move it accordingly. Now I can hold Command, click on my furthest, furthest point, and do the same thing again. So just hold, drag, and make sure it matches up with our edge. Now something to keep in mind is when your arms extend out too far like this, say I want my selection to go right to here, you'll see how it does this weird loop. It's because one of the arms is too long so it's telling the program to curve our line essentially. So to fix that is we can hold our alt key, drag down our arm so it's only affecting, when we hold our alt key it only affects the arm that we're clicking on and then we can just point it in the right direction. So in this case, out towards where we want to go. Now I can make a new click and the line is totally straight as you can see. So I'm just going to go around and keep continu continuing to do this. Just clicking, dragging, curving, all the good stuff. So the pen tool is what I use to cut out pretty much 99% of all my images, primarily when I'm cutting out a person. Since people have a lot of weird curves and edges that are hard to define easily by the program, the pen tool gives you the ability to show the program this is exactly what I want. So it's important to try to get as close to the edge as you can without going over. So just like that. Now I can zoom out. And then, so if, in this case, I this is the only area that I want to select. So now I can just run my pen tool along the outside because it doesn't matter and just finish up my and complete my path. So now I have my pen tool path and I can just right click and go make selection. Now I want my feather to be zero because I don't want a feather on my edges of course. I want them to be a hard edge. So now I can just click OK and I get these awesome little marching ants everywhere. And now I can just add the selection to a layer mask on our layer. And just like that we have cut out our staircase perfectly. So I, if I wanted, I could add the city down below, some trees, whatever it is, but I've cut out a perfect selection around our staircase. So coming in at number one, that is our pen tool. So just to quickly recap what we went over, coming in at number three was our quick selection tool. Now our quick selection tool is absolutely awesome for when there's a clear defined edge, like a horizon, that we can just quickly cut out without having to use our pen tool or our channels. Coming in at number two was our channels. The channels are absolutely awesome when there's some little tricky bits that would be difficult to cut out with the quick selection tool or the pen tool. Channels makes it easy for Photoshop to recognize what you want and what you don't want when you pretty much break down our image into black and white. Then coming in at number one is the absolutely fantastic pen tool. So the pen tool is awesome when you need a very, very accurate and flawless selection, such as cutting out a person or long curvy staircases in this tutorial's case. There can be absolutely no mistakes made with the pen tool because you are the one that is in charge of it all. There's no guessing done by Photoshop. You are pretty much telling Photoshop, this is what I want, I don't want anything else. And you are in charge of all of that. So that's how. That's why I would say that the pen tool is the absolute best way to cut out an image in Photoshop. Although it does take more time, the time does pay off in the long run. If this tutorial helped you and you learned something, I would love if you hit that like button and maybe even considered hitting that subscribe button. I make new Photoshop tutorials every single Wednesday. If you're wanting to see more of my work, make sure to check me out on Instagram at burnwills. 
or for a more complete portfolio, you can also check out my website at outboundmedia.net. This was the top three best ways to cut out images in Photoshop. Now I hope to see you back here next Wednesday for another new Photoshop tutorial. See you then.